Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I'm here. It's another book haul. I don't even know where half of these came from. Well, I shouldn't say that. They came from a number of different places. So it feels like I was picking up a book or two here and there and then all of a sudden I have this huge stack. So I want to get through these, get them situated on my shelf, um, and then I need to... I have a few books I need to take to a f couple of the free little libraries in my little neighborhood so I might do a little bike ride drop off and see what they have um so I'm gonna do that as well as I need to start planning for um kind of this Christmas if we're gonna do another book exchange or or whatnot is in store with that so if I have some ideas I want to start getting things together so I need my space over here to be cleaned up so I need to haul these books first so I can start planning for those things so I have a decent pile here. I know, I have an idea, the synopsis for most of them. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what I have. And again, came from very random different, very random places. So let's start with book of the month because I know exactly what books I got from there. Cause that's easy. Um, first one I picked up was The Vanishing Half by Brit, Brit Bennett. And this was the month that this was a book of the month option. I almost got it and I can't think of what I got instead. I think it was Home Before Dark. I don't know, something like that. Like it was, it was a hard decision. So I added it to my box this last month. Um, we are actually reading this for my book club book pick this month for my book club with work. Um, so I know this follows two sisters. They are, yeah, identical, identical twins, right? Um, one decides to kind of stay in their Southern small black community and is considered in a black person and the other one moves away and kind of is portrayed as white so very interesting i've heard there's a little more to it than that um but i've heard great things so far about the people who have been reading it so i can't wait to get to that one next one i picked up from book of the month was mexican gothic by silvio moreno garcia i am so excited for this book um i know it deals with like um, our main character Naomi has to go back to let's see back to a house in the Mexican countryside not sure what she's not sure what she will find I believe she gets like a letter or something in the mail um, and she has to go investigate and there's some secrets and there's some stuff I don't know it's great I don't care I've been so excited for this book and look at these pages like I want to color them I probably won't but um, but yeah, I've been super, super excited about this. I thought that there was another one, maybe that. Um, but yeah, I want to get to this. Uh, there's a book club that's reading this for August. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it then or if I want to save it until October. I'm tempted to save it till October. So we'll see if that happens, but I picked that one up. The last book I picked out or picked up from Book of the Month is The Beauty and Breaking by Michelle Harper. She is an ER physician. Um, she's African American, so obviously working in a very predominantly white male field um, gives her a very interesting perspective. So this really talks about, it's a memoir that talks about um, being an emergency room physician and how life of service to others has taught her how to heal herself. Um, just paging through this, it appears to be a somewhat easy read um or like a fiction that feels or a non-fiction that feels like a fiction is kind of what i'm getting at that i should be able to get through this pretty quickly i haven't heard a lot about it but i'm excited for it so now i have to go take some brownies out of the oven i'll be right back all right so then the rest of this pile is kind of I don't know. I, I don't know where they all came from, but I'm just going to talk about what I have. So next one I have is The Silent Treatment by Abby Greaves. Graves. This sounds really interesting. So this follows our couple, Frank and Maggie, and they have had what appears to be a very happy, loving marriage. I don't know how long they've been married. For quite a while, but somehow something happened, and for the past six months, they haven't talked to each other, like at all, like no words spoken. They go through their daily life, they eat meals together, sleep in the same bed together, but it's completely quiet. Until Frank finds Maggie collapsed in the kitchen, unconscious, with an empty packet of sleeping pills on the table. She's rushed to the hospital, put in a medically induced coma, um, while the doctors assess the damage. When she regains consciousness, Maggie might never be the same. 
and Frank is overwhelmed with the thought of losing his wife, um, but will he be able to find his voice again and kind of explain kind of what happened? So I'm really intrigued by what little thing caused this couple to stop speaking to each other for such a long time. I am not going to lie, I have used the silent treatment before, but it's maybe lasted a couple of days. Not, not, I just, I can't even fathom that long. So, interested to see where that book takes us. Okay, this next book I have, I do know where I got it from. Um, I was super excited to get this from Herbert Collins. It is A Most English Princess. This comes out, I believe, in September. So I need to get to this one, like, now. Um, but this follows, basically, the story of Princess Victoria. Um, we're talking, like, mid-1800s. Um, and her, like her growing up, her getting married, her relationship with her parents, um, sounds really, I'm just super excited about it. And I love this cover. So pretty. So I'm getting to that one. I should put that to the side so I don't forget it. Right? All right. Next book I have is The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. I blame my friend Cindy at work for this one. So this story follows two babies who are abandoned at a Montreal orphanage in the winter of 1914. And they kind of end up bonding with each other and kind of growing up with each other. Um, one of them is, becomes a piano prodigy basically. And then the other one um, becomes a dancer. So it follows kind of them growing up and then I believe they're torn apart once they get old enough, they have they both have to navigate the Great Depression, um, and I believe they end up kind of reuniting. But in, there's there's some stuff that happens, some crime. They do what they can to survive. It sounds intriguing. Plus, this cover is beautiful. Except I gotta get my sticker off. I'll do that later. All right. Next book I picked up um, is The Shadows We Hide by Alan Eskins. I read his book, The Life We Bury. Um, it was actually been a while, but that book still sticks with me. There are lines in that book and passages in that book that I just, I still find myself thinking about. So I don't have a clue. Look, I haven't even opened this. It's like, I have to crack it open. I have no clue what this is even about. I solely bought it because of the author and I love this. This reminds me of home. Like this is, this feels very Wisconsin ish not that it takes place in Wisconsin but um anyways so it says in this darkly lyrical and brilliant sequel to the life we bury Joe who's the main character of it returns to investigate the murder of the father he never knew and to reckon with his own family's past I didn't even know this was the sequel to it wow Lindsay but now I'm even more excited so I'm not gonna read anymore otherwise I might spoil I don't think I didn't spoil anything so Next one I have is The Girl on the Bridge by James Heyman. Again, I don't like to know a whole lot of the about these types of books, um, but I do know first sentence says, on a freezing December night, a young woman named Hannah leaps to her death from an old railway bridge into the rushing waters of the river below. Only her husband knows the real cause of, her, of Hannah's death was trauma suffered 12 years earlier when Hannah was plucked from a crowd of freshman girls at a college fraternity party, and things went from there. So, interested in that book. Um, I picked this one up, couldn't tell you where, but because of, um, what's her channel name? I'll leave it below. The Girly Girl Bookworm, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, totally based on her. She was reading, either read this one or read an Amanda Quick book not that long ago, and I was like, yep, I need to check her out. This one is called Tightrope, and it follows a trapeze artist named Amelia. Um who's trying to reinvent herself but things aren't going all that great for her um so i'm again i'm intrigued very intrigued and first of all i love this cover so it's one of those where i was probably watching booktube and probably had my computer up and probably just started buying books like this one um, the Winemaker's Wife by Kristen Harmel. I am a part of a group on Facebook that actually was talking about this specific book and I'm like, okay, that cover A is gorgeous. And I believe we are World War II historic fiction. So I was like, yes, I need the book. Um, 
Let's see, at the dawn of the Second World War, War, Inez is the young wife of Michael, owner of a picturesque champagne house nestled among rolling vineyards near Reims, France. It should be an idyllic life, but Inez, who's often treated like a child by her husband, um, his chef, Theo, and Theo's wife, Celine, um, they're all increasingly unhappy. She's determined to make a change, but then the Germans arrive. Is there a map? Oh, no, there's no map. Darn it. But I just, I've heard great things. Again, in this, this group that I was in, they were raving about this book, so picked it up. Another book, I have no idea. Where, I might have grabbed this out of a free little library. That's possible. This is Here and Gone by Halen Beck. Again, I don't want to know anything about it because I believe it is a thriller, psychological thriller, some sort of, it says a fantastic thriller, a lone woman, a nightmare scenario, high stakes, breathless suspense, and a satisfying conclusion. Doesn't get any better than this, according to Lee Child, which I'll take that. So I picked it up. All right, we're getting there. Next one I have, I think these two, I think, my friend Amber gave to me. And she dropped some books off. We traded, it was fantastic. Give her books, leave, she gives me books. It works. This is Montauk by Nic Nicola Harrison. This just, this came out not that long ago, I believe. So um, Montauk, Long Island, 1938. There is a couple, let's see. Beatrice and Harry go spend several weeks there every summer at this 200 year old seaside hotel and with all of the other rich, I don't know, other couples and crowd that they're normally with. Um, her husband goes off to his extracurricular activities, which is in quotes, so I don't know what that means, but Beatrice kind of finds herself being drawn more towards Montauk's natural beauty, its community, it, the people who um, actually live there all year round, um, and maybe might lead to something else. I'm not sure. We'll see. The next one she gave me is The Dressmaker's Dowry. I'm pretty sure, Amber, I think this is what you gave me. Um, Meredith Jaeger is the author. Dual timelines, so I'm totally intrigued. Late 1800s in San Francisco. So we have, um, what's her name? Margaret and Hanalore are seamstresses, um, just kind of working to stay afloat. Margaret, I believe, disappears. Hannah starts searching for her and has help from someone named Lucas Havensworth, somewhat of a wealthy person. Um, so they, somehow he is involved. So we've got that one timeline, figuring that out. And then I believe we have present day San Francisco where we have a journalist named Sarah. She marries into the Havensworth family um, and she's trying to really kind of fit into this world yet still keep up her journalist side of her. She starts, or she stumbles upon an old newspaper headline um, about these dressmakers believed to have been murdered and starts going down this path trying to figure out what happened to Hannah and Marguerite. So I am way too excited about this book probably but I can't wait to read that next one I have again another booktuber's fault I don't remember who truly devious by Maureen Johnson I know um it is thrillerish or yeah thriller it's supposed to be scary so I don't want to know anything about it it says look a riddle time for fun should we use a rope or a gun okay Next one I have is Let's No One Get Hurt by John Panita. Again, no clue where I got this book from. Um, oh, oh yes, this one sounds good. So we have 15 year old Pearl, her and her father, and I believe a couple other men are squatting in this abandoned boathouse and they've been kind of surviving there for quite a long time in the deep swamps of the American South. Um, they all kind of live on the fringe. They scavenge for what they can. They find catfish lumber scraps for their ailing dog. Then we have Mason Boyd, AKA Man Boy, is from an influent neighborhood where he and his friends ride around in tricked out golf court, golf carts, shoot their father's shotguns and inspire to be internet pranking, inspire, aspire to make internet pranking videos. While Pearl's out savaging the woods, she meets Mason, who eventually reveals that his father has purchased the property that they're squatting on. And then it goes from there. Look at this little book. That's a lot for this little thing. I mean, and look at, I mean, the chapters are not long. I could, I should have done this in my read-a-thon. 
you know, really 220 pages. I could have definitely done that. Oh well, save it for next time. I know these two books, um, this was Instagram's fault. Um, let's see, Rachel at Happy Go, Happy Go Lovely Book Sleeves. She makes awesome book sleeves. She's kind of like, I aspire to be as good as she is, honestly. She's awesome. Um, but she was doing a book swap. She, I didn't have any good books to swap with her, but I did purchase these two from her, which I am so excited about. So we have The Hunting Problem, The Hunting Problem, yeah. That's, that's a problem, no. The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, who I just read her, the guest list by her. Super interested into figuring or seeing how this book is kind of comes apart. I My expectations for the guest list were a little wrong. I assumed it was something that it really wasn't and taking those assumptions out of it, I definitely would have liked the book more. So I'm trying not to assume anything with this book. But somebody better die if it's the hunting party <laughs> right but i'm excited i'm a, if it's written similar to how the guest list was i'm all about it because she has all these multiple perspectives and you're like trying to figure out how this all comes together it's awesome and she's such she was such an at atmospheric writer with the guest list i can't wait to see what this is about i've talked about that enough the other book i picked up was the last flight by julie clark also from rachel don't want to know anything about it. I've heard fantastic, fantastic things about this book. Can't wait. I believe it involves two people on separate planes or they switch identities or something like that and they go off and one of them, one of the planes crashes or something, something to that effect. Um, I have a lot of books I'm not going to talk about what they're about because I don't want to know. We have The Invited by Jennifer McMahon. She wrote The Winter People. She wrote, what was the other book I read by her? Um... The Night Sister? No. Winter People? Anyways, I've been obsessed with her and been wanting to read more. This is her newest book. I don't want to know anything about it. Her books are creepy, creepy, beyond creepy. Like The Winter People? Super creepy. So I can't wait. I think I'm getting prepped for my October where I read all creepy, thrillery books. It's basically where all of these books have come from. <laughs> Next one I picked up is Where the Lost Wander by Amy Harmon. I had a couple of my friends read this. Um, both of them, I would never imagine that either one of them would A, read a book about people going on the Oregon Trail and B, both of them loving it as much as they did, but they loved it. So I had to get my hands on this. Um, but basically, um, mid 1800, 1800s, the Overland Trail, which is basically your Oregon Trail, taking a family out West. There are Indians involved. I'm sure there's, I, I'm sure this is going to bring back all of my Oregon Trail playing hours that I spent in elementary school trying not to die in that game. I feel like it's coming to life, but I'm sure there's more to it. But like I said, they said amazing, amazing things about this book. I can't wait to get to that one too. Then I have In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. This is our book club pick for September. We had a pick, our theme for that month was a book that had a repeating word in its title, which was a really fun, interesting kind of theme. And this is what we picked up. Again, don't want to know anything about it. We're almost done, I promise. Next one I have is Hide and Seek by MJ Arledge. I know that this takes place inside of a prison and I believe it might be part of a series too I should look that up this might have been another free little library pickup but takes place in a prison so we have Helen Grace as a target on her back and nowhere to hide she's made a long list of enemies over the course of her career some are incarcerated within the very walls that she's in so sounds interesting this was my target pickup when I went to Target on a day that I felt like I just needed to buy something for myself, so I picked up this one. Um, the Plum Tree by Ella Marie Wiseman. First of all, Ella Marie Wiseman, I need more from her in my life. And second of all, it, I believe, is, yeah, World War II historical fiction, friends. Shocking. Um, takes place where we, and this, again, very interesting premise. We have Christine, who is a servant for the Bowerman family. Um, who is a Jewish family and they all live in a small German village. So you have a little bit of a interesting roles there. Um, and Christine and Isaac, who is the son of this uh, family, have 
connected, bonded, like each other. Um, and then as they kind of figure out what their future looks like, potentially, uh, Germany decides to invade. Or no, not, I mean they live in Germany. Sorry, Hitler's regime decides to kind of take over and basically forbids Christine from even returning to her job, let alone having a relationship with Isaac. So, sounds so interesting. I'm surprised. Ellen Marie Wiseman is usually my dual timeline lady and I don't believe this is, so really interested in that one. Next one I have is The Address by Fiona Davis. I really need to read more. She's an author I have a couple of books by, but I haven't read anything yet. But this sound, again, really interesting. So we have this really grand upscaling New York apartment called the Dakota, and this takes place in 1884. Here's my dual timeline book. Um, so we have Theo and Sarah. Sarah has um, just recently gotten the job to manage this hotel, which is, or this apartment building, which is not common for a woman be, to be taking over, but she does. And she strikes up a relationship with Theo, who um, lives there. Fast forward 100 years, and we have Bailey, who is a descendant of Theo's, um, who is kind of getting, trying to get her life back together and decides that she can, is going to start refurbishing or restoring Theo's old apartment at the Dakota. And discovers, finds out, somehow figures out that um, their Theo was stabbed by a mad woman who was an employee of the Dakota named Sarah. So you're like, wait a second. I thought they were co they were cool, and now she stabbed him. What happened? Totally intrigued by that. Yes. Two more. Almost there. Next one I have is Little Faith by Nicholas Butler. This is for my August book club pick. I'm not as excited about it, but we'll see if I get to it. So it is set in Wisconsin. Um, and we have, let's see, Lyle and Peg are now living in their golden years in a quiet and contented life in rural Wisconsin. After a troubled adolescence and a period of estrangement with their daughter Shiloh, she's returning home, bringing her five-year-old son Isaac with her. Shiloh has changed in her time away from home, however, um, now that she is feverishly involved member of an extremist church and the pastor believes that Isaac has the God-given ability to heal the sick. Lyle, whose own faith was severely shaken after tragedy years ago, finds himself torn. The practice of the church makes him increasingly uneasy, but if he rebuffs Shiloh's newfound community, his daughter and grandson might disappear again for good. So interesting concept not quite as excited about it nicholas butler also wrote shotgun love songs which we read last year because we like to read a book either set in wisconsin or from wisconsin author he does live in wisconsin so we're gonna give it a shot i should leave that one out the last one i did a book exchange with um one of you guys one of my um followers um, who actually doesn't live that far from me, so that's kind of fun. Um, so she sent me Bird in Hand by Christina Baker Klein, who also wrote The Orphan Train, which I was obsessed with and loved, so I'm super excited to hear about this book. So this one follows four main characters. We have Allison and Charlie who are married and have kids, and we have Claire and Ben. Um, Claire and Allison are the our best friends. Um, Claire and Ben don't have any children. Um, I believe there's a car accident involved where Allison's involved. I don't know if she flees or if something, there's some more complex thing to this car accident, but I believe also that Charlie and Claire are having an affair. Ben really wants kids, really wants Alice and Charlie, Allison and Charlie's life. Uh, there's some complications here. It sounds like a good, like, just family drama book um, about how things are going to change. I don't know, but we're going to give it a, a try. So I'm super excited about it. So that's my book haul. Good thing I'm reading. Like I am reading so much and I'm loving it. So I've already hit my Goodreads goal. It's still only July. I'm not gonna feel too bad about this, especially considering we're not getting out into the world anytime soon. So we're just gonna keep on reading. Keep escaping into my good books. So. If you've heard of any of these or if you have any specific recommendations for them, comment below, like, subscribe, all of that fun stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye. I wrote his book, The Light. I wrote his book? I didn't write his book. Stop, Lindsay. Read. Read the synopsises before you start making shit up and, like, telling people the wrong things. 
Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. I was way too enthusiastically fake. 